Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to the Key Hire Human Capital for Small Business live stream. My name is Corey Harlock. I'm the principal and creator of Key Hire. Uh, and people always wonder, what is Key Hire? What do you guys do? Well, we're not a recruiting agency. Uh, we're human capital resource uh, consultants for small business owners. So we can do acquisition for you. A lot of a lot of what we do is creating new roles and acquiring the talent to fill those new roles for small businesses. But we also create organizational charts and and human capital plans, complete plans to help you scale your business. Anyway, enough about us. Uh, today, we wanted to talk about um, how can we change the small business mindset to help us scale our business. Uh, it could be tough for some of you small business owners to hear, but uh, those of you who've worked with me uh, or know me know I'm a pretty direct communicator, so I'm not changing now. We're just gonna kind of walk through this stuff. Uh, I did a blog or a video a while ago called Addicted to Chaos. And so many small business owners are addicted to chaos. And what I mean by that is many small business owners think the value of their product or service is tied up in how hard it is to deliver, not the quality or the OTD, the on-time delivery, um, not the quality or delivery, but the, the pain they have to go through to deliver it. And I may have shared the story before, but um, I worked with, with a manufacturer and uh, part of their deal was, hey, we can get you anything anytime. You just have to pay for it. We will we will find it. And by the simple process of kind of going through what what that material was that they were being called on most and saying, let's just put it in the warehouse. And when people call, say, yeah, we will try to find it for you, even though it's in the warehouse. Um, you can still charge whatever you want. They don't know where how hard it was for you to find that that material. But the owner was like, no, we can't do that. It's too easy. Um, I can't charge as much if it's not that, if it's not hard. And the reality is you can charge that much. You can just say, hey, we're the guys who have the, we're the only guys who have the material. We can still charge our prices. So he was, the owner was in love with the pain, how hard it was to deliver and not the quality or the delivery time of his product. So this is the mindset that we talk about shifting. Um, and, and when we look at that, um, the, the first thing we want to do is acknowledge that we're trapped in this, right? We have to acknowledge that we may, the business may have outgrown our, as a business owner's experience or capacity and or the experience and capacity of our leadership team. It's the Peter Principle. Everyone rises to the level of their own incompetence. And that sounds really hard. And maybe a nicer way to say it is everyone rises to the level of their own experience. Uh, if we don't have the experience to draw upon to make improvements, we can't make the improvements. And oftentimes leadership teams in a small business are people that have been with us a long time. They're the people that have shown up every day. They were reliable. They care. They care about our business. They're part of our family, our work family. We trust them. And we've, we've kept promoting them throughout the years. But at the end of the day, the only experience they have is in our business doing X amount of dollars. And they don't have experience or capacity to draw upon to make to improve upon, upon our process or processes and procedures that we can scale into. They don't have the capacity, right? And they also become overvalued assets. We talked about this in the last live stream. We're often paying them more than the open market would pay them because they've been with us so long. So they're an overpaid asset that doesn't have the experience or the capacity to drive our business or help us uh, create process and procedure to help us scale. So once we acknowledge this and say, look at I, I, we don't have the resources in the building. Maybe you as a business owner know what to do and you're on your leaders to execute and they're not executing. 
what are those symptoms of a leader that is lacking capacity or experience? We've covered this as well. Uh, they start missing deadlines. They might be really short, blaming people, pointing fingers, blaming other departments. They start to micromanage and really get into the weeds on their people. They don't start delegating. A manager who used to deliver on time and used to be your right hand that is struggling now, often uh, the, the business the business has outgrown their experience or capability to deliver in the way you need them to. So this is what we need to look at. We need to acknowledge that and say, okay, the processes and procedures we have in the building and the, the leadership and capacity and experience we have in the building aren't what we need to scale. When you build a business, no, very few people build their business and say, the first thing we need to do is build processes and procedures that are scalable so we can grow rapidly. You hire your neighbor, you hire your in-law, you hire your friends to help you uh, deliver and build your product or deliver your service. And the processes get built through by a need out of necessity. And they're usually pretty ad hoc. Before you know it, you have a $10 million business and it's running on a $5 million process and you're already kind of busting at the seams. Uh, your engine, you know, you're redlining your engine, right? Your RPM gauge is all the way to the top. And often we think if we can just get someone in here, more people to do more of what we're doing, we can sustain our growth. But that's just not the case. We have to acknowledge that uh, we don't have the capacity and experience in the building. It could be us as the business owner. It could be our leadership team. It could be both. And then we have to also acknowledge that the way we're doing things, we can't just do more of that if we want to scale our business. That's step one, acknowledge it. Step two then becomes we, we have to change our, our hiring philosophy. So many business owners have a hiring philosophy, people that we work with all the time of this good enough, the best of the worst. Well, these are the people that applied and the, this is the person that is closest to what we need. In effect, the best of all the worst candidates or they're good enough and they're available now because we need help now. But ultimately what we're, we're doing is hiring someone into the business who is going to require and demand more of our time and be more of a drain on the business than a positive uh, influence or having positive impact. So how do we how do we change our hiring philosophy? Uh, philosophy? We need to start saying we need to get an expert in this area. And to do that, we really need to dial back and look at what do we need? And if you don't know what you need, then you need to bring someone in who does understand what you need. Uh, it could be a consultant, it could be key hire, it could be uh, someone who runs another business, but pull on your resources to say, hey, we need to upgrade or add a sales leader. We need to upgrade or add an operations leader. What should we be looking for? What are those key elements, those six to eight key elements they have to have that will enable us to scale and grow and enable them to create those processes and procedures. For example, if you're trying to scale your business and you're a manufacturing company and you don't have a really excellent health and safety process and procedure in your business, uh, you don't have an understanding of lean management or how to streamline your operation, Sometimes people don't even understand what's lean management. I've heard of it, but I really don't know what it is. In reality, it's essential for you to be able to scale, to be able to create a quality product on time, to, to maximize your, your manpower resources, to minimize your labor dollars, all of those things that will help you scale. If you're looking for someone in sales, you might want to understand someone who really can dig into budgets. Uh, create forecasting, create KPIs, 
understands the difference, the transition between having someone who is an account manager um, to a business development person. You know, very, very rarely are those the same people. So understanding how to divide out the department and shape it and, and create a, part, a department uh, where you can effectively have sales flow through, a greater number of sales flow through and you can be more effective in dealing with those. And once you understand what that is, and at Key Hire, we call that your avatar, creating that avatar, which is you know that two-dimensional snapshot, a piece of paper that's not a job description because I believe job descriptions are really just a wish list. If they could do this, 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 oh yeah, and if we could get this and we could get this and we could get that. Um, if you can create an avatar of the essentials, exactly what it is, right? Uh, what experience do they need? Uh, defining your culture and core values and how do they fit into those? And more importantly, are they bringing capacity to your business? Do they have more experience than you need today so they can create process and procedure your business can grow and scale into? Creating that avatar and then you know, acquiring talent or recruiting to the avatar and not settling for anything less. It takes longer, it's harder, but the payoff is great, right? It's short-term pain for long-term gain where a lot of small business owners will say, hey, this person's available now, they're close enough, let's hire them. And a couple things can happen with that. Um, in, in the short term, they do a great job, but as the business grows and scales and changes, they become someone who uh, doesn't have the experience or capacity to help you grow or they work themselves out of a job. After six months, you think, okay, they did great, but now what do we do with them? Because you didn't think into the future. If I'm at $10 million, this is what I need. But if I'm at $20 million, what does this role look like? And what does that experience and capacity look like? So we really want to change our hiring philosophy from hiring available now, good enough, best of the worst, to clearly outlining and identifying what this role is and then recruiting to that. At Key Hire, we call them 80%. You, you want to hire someone who has 80% of what you need, minimum. They could have more. Um, that way, you know, when they come in, they can have immediate impact and they can take things off your plate rather than adding to, uh, you know, you needing to spend more time with them and training them and waiting for them to get up to speed. And then the third thing you need to do. So number one, uh, we have to acknowledge we need help. Number two, we have to define what is that help? What does it look like? And number three, get out of the way. If you hire someone who is better at their job than you are, let them do their job. And here, here is the reality. They're going to change things. Bringing someone in who has a lot of experience, and often this is this is part of what we do, and this is how I explain often what our meetings are like with our clients. Small business owners work hard. They, they, they work tons of hours. They put their relationships with their family and friends at risk. Their work-life balance is, is crazy. Uh, they carry a burden of making sure they can you know, pay their, their employees so they can put food on the table. It's hard work being a business owner. And the business that you've grown is amazing. But my job and the job of people who come into your business with more experience than you have is to often tell you your baby's ugly. Um, you've got it this far, all right? What you did to take it from zero to five or $10 million worked. It got you there. But what got you to five or $10 million won't get you to 15 or $20 million. And oftentimes we need to kind of break those processes. And if you hire someone who has the capacity and experience and more experience and capacity than you need today, someone, if you're a $10 million a year business, someone who understands how to build and create and run a 30 or a $40 million business, their ideas the processes that they want to implement, the procedures they want to implement in your business are going to be different than the ones that currently exist. It doesn't mean yours are bad. It just means they're, they're, they're outdated. They're not scalable. 
They were perfect to get you to $10 million, but they're the wrong processes to get you to 20. And you have to let these people do what they do. Make those changes. It's going to hurt. And it's hard to, to watch someone say, yeah, this. I understand why you put this process in place here, but we need to change it because it doesn't work anymore. It's antiquated. It's outdated. Um, or you're not using technology. We need to inject it, technology into your business, whatever it is. It's scary. But if you if you've targeted, if you've acknowledged you need the help, then you've targeted the right person. We need to trust them to come in and make our business better. We can't hire great people and say, oh, this is how we do things. I need you to do it this way. The process didn't work before. Hiring a great person won't make the process work. If the process doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, so those are just my thoughts around the small business mindset and how we can change it and kind of what holds small business owners back often, you know, uh, I have a philosophy that every business does the exact revenue it's designed to do. And if you're at $10 million and you got to 12 and it almost killed you and then COVID came and you dropped to seven and now you're creeping back up to 10, but you're working tons again. That's an indication that your business is designed to do $10 million and it doesn't matter who you inject into the business or the talent you bring in or how many hours you work, $10 million is your number, plus or minus a little bit, but it's not 20. Uh, 20 will probably, you know, 20 could melt your business, melt your operation or melt your sales team. And we don't want that. We want you to be able to scale, but at the same time, enjoy a bit of a work-life balance, be able to offload, delegate, trust your leadership to do what they need to do and have you enjoy being a business owner.